Okay, guys, so now let's move to question 3.4.2. I hope you can see on the question paper, uh, the question says calculate the length of BT. And this question is allocated four marks. So let's refer to this graph because it's, al it's almost ac accurate when, when you compare to uh, you know the graph that i remember guys a disclaimer a graph that i drew it's not to scale so it doesn't necessarily mean that you, you can use a ruler to measure from there up to there and expect it to be equal to uh, the length from that point to that point so i just drew it by hand for the purpose of referring to that uh, a diagram if i need to write information like this any additional information which has not given of which I cannot write on the screen of my tablet. So I'll just uh, quickly refer to this and then when we proceed with the question, I'll refer to the one that I draw, uh, that I drew by hand. So the question says, uh, let's see, calculate the length of BT. Let's check where's BT. So this is BT. And remember, we are given BA, which is 15 units. And we just calculated the uh, coordinates of T. So what I'm saying is, how about we calculate the length or distance from A to T. As soon as we get it, then we can use a theorem of Pythagoras to then calculate the length of BT. I hope... Uh, you understand my approach otherwise you'll have a good understanding when I solve the question okay so let's get started with the question so remember guys uh, what we're going to do is to calculate the distance of a uh, AT from there after calculating the distance of AT we're going to use a theorem of Pythagoras to then calculate the length of BT, which is what the question wants. So now the distance, obviously, you know the distance formula. It's x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So we won't waste time on this one. Uh, obviously you've done a lot of calculations related to the distance in grade 10 and also the grade tens they are aware of this formula so it's just a matter of substituting so what we've got let's see remember guys i've just written the coordinates of t there so that you can easily see uh, when i substitute so let's regard the coordinates of t as the x x and y2 and then we can refer to this a coordinates of a s x and y a one so our x2 that means it's going to be 4 we subtract our x1 which is negative 2 so I'm putting it in brackets because it's negative so that a uh, you know it's clear when I punch on a calculator instead of having minus I mean 4 minus and a smaller minus there so it's best when you substitute in brackets then you add your y2, obviously it's 7, minus into negative 5, a close bracket, and then you square it. So this is equals to a good question may be asked uh, to say, can you use this as your x1 and y2 and use this as your, uh, you know, as... Can you use this as your x2 and y2 and use this as your x1 and y1? The answer to that question is yes, whichever way. What matters the most is when you substitute. So you shouldn't interchange, you know, when you substitute, you should just maintain that consistency. So now you can pull out your calculator, then you just say square root into 4 minus into negative 2, you close and then you just closed 
for that bracket for negative 2. Now you close for the whole thing and you square it. Then you add, you open bracket 7 minus into negative 5, close, close, squared. It's equals 2. Then you get an answer in that form, which is a 6 square root of 5. You can just write it as 6 square root of 5. This is to avoid having to write it as a decimal where you might, uh, you know, miss a number or you get to a point where you factorize and in the end you don't get an accurate value. So let's just write it as 6 square root of 5. So it's more like now we've got, a, let me just try to redraw what we have. This is a 90 degree angle. So we've got this length, which is six square root of five. This one, it has been given as 15. Remember this is A, this is B, this is T. So now they want you to calculate B, T. So this is where we can use theorem of Pythagoras. Remember, this is then our, um, a, you know, R on the formula of a theorem of Pythagoras, so is the is the hypotenuse. So you obviously know that when we use a theorem of Pythagoras, we're going to have a b squared, which is that squared, it's equals to a t squared plus b t b t squared. Can you see? So this is the general formula for calculating you know, the uh, hypotenuse using theorem of uh, Pythagoras. I assume, I think even the grade tens, they, they do know this formula of theorem of Py Pythagoras. So now it's just a matter of substituting guys. Can you see that one is 15. So in brackets, let's say it's 15 squared, which is equals to 80. We've just calculated 80, then it's 6 square root of 5 plus bt squared. So bt, it's what we are calculating. So now uh, we can say bt squared, it's equals to, can punch all of this on a calculator, which is going to be open bracket uh, 15 squared. Obviously, you move that to the left side of the equal sign so that you remain with bt squared on one side. Then you subtract open bracket 6 square root of 5, use that arrow and then you close, then you get 45. So that means bt, you obviously remove that squared. So you're going to introduce a square root. So it means bt, it's equals to the square root of 45 which is equals to let's say the square root of answer there it's equals to 3 okay let me firstly write it as 3 a square root of 5 in the form of decimal it should be uh, 6 it's 6.71 units so let's say units so I I, I hope you are able to see the final answer and you understood how I got to that um, final answer. So that's basically how you solve for a uh, question 3.4.2. I think I can quickly just make use of this opportunity to uh, quickly calculate the next question because I've just noticed uh, it's not that long. Okay, before, thanks thanks for reminding me. Before I move to the next question, I can quickly show you where you score a max on this question. So, remember guys, this question, I think it was allocated four marks. Let me just quickly confirm. Can you see it was calculated, it was, it was allocated four marks. So I'm sure you're interested in knowing exactly where do you score your first mark. 
so obviously we can't give you a mark for the formula you already we assume you already know it by heart or it's given as part of the question paper so we just give you a mark for correct substitution that's where you score a you know your your first mark and then your second mark comes a from let's see i think they they can give you a mark for this step so they can give you a mark for that step and then uh, let's see what have you calculated i think you're calculating there yeah no, i think i jumped somewhere there you should score a mark there because you substitute for, for correct substitution and also for correct answer there then they give you a mark for a uh, using theorem of pythagoras obviously they won't give you a mark for the formula or for formulating using the theorem of pythagoras they will give you a mark for correct substitution just like they did there then they will also give you the last mark on your final answer so 6.71 is the answer for that question so now uh let's see they're saying write down the length of the radius of the circle passing through points b c and t let's see if we were to draw a circle passing through points let me see b c and t b c and t let me just try to reread that question. Let's see. Write down the length of the radius of the circle passing through points B, C, and T. B, C, and T. Uh, let me see. B, C, and t they want you to calculate a uh, the radius write down the length of the radius of the circle passing through a um, points b c and t so obviously guys b c then it means BC, if you can see, BC, it's going to be the diameter of that circle. Because if you were to draw a circle, I'm not sure if it's going to be clear or it's going to make, you know, a funny thing on, 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 this, on this thing. But let's say if you were to draw a circle passing uh, from this two point, can you see what I'm talking about? There. Let's just try to see how that circle would look like. I'm not sure if you are able to see, guys, but let me just quickly try to redraw that thing. So we've got B, we've got C. This question is a bit tricky. You just need to apply a, your full attention there. So let's say you've got B, C, and T and you were to draw a circle passing through these two points so obviously that circle would go like that can you see so that means if you can see let me just indicate there that we are on 3.4 point let me see 3.4.3 which is the last question so that means obviously guys you know when you have a circle right uh, the line there that touches these two points it's your diameter and halfway is your radius so if you can have a look guys you can you can clearly see that your b c is the diameter of that circle so that means your b c will be the diameter of that circle now the question is have we calculated a a, the length of BC you don't necessarily need to calculate the length of BC because you already know that this is a kite which means a 
a b is equals to b c so that means b c is also 15 units so that's why i'm saying b c is equals to 15 units okay then that means halfway is the radius if the diameter is equals to 15 units okay so a uh, that obviously means the radius it's equals to 15 divided by 2 which is 7.5 units so so that means the length of the radius of the circle passing through a b c and t it's equals to 7.5 units and this question is allocated two marks so you just go full two marks for the correct final answer so this question guys it wasn't supposed to be complicated or difficult but then it was a bit tricky i've noticed when i approached a uh, this question i got a bit confused but then i had to you know uh, come together relax and apply my full attention to this question so that's why i was able to then realize that it's actually not that much complicated especially for the fact that it's given two marks so uh, we are completely done with this question guys thanks for joining i hope you enjoy it and just make sure that if you started watching from this lesson i've got a uh, videos where i started from question 3.1 which is where i would, I would advise you to start with this uh, question but before 3.1 i've also done a video where i was just analyzing that given diagram i wasn't solving or answering any question so it sort of gives you a background so that you are able to follow when we solve these upcoming uh, upcoming questions so that brings us to the end of this lesson and um thank you for for watching guys uh, my name is desmond and i'm out